In this video, we are going to walk through how to set up the Imagely plugin for Lightroom. At this point, you should have the plugin installed in your Lightroom catalog. If you do not, please visit imagely.com slash docs to find the first step on installing the Lightroom plugin. Once it's installed, you will see that the Imagely plugin will show up next to other plugins you might have installed and active. Hit the setup button that shows up there. And then you will be faced with uh, creating all of the, uh, or inputting the content that you need to set up the plugin. So first we're going to name this, we're gonna call it my website. And then you're gonna put in the URL or the domain of your website with the HTTP. And if you have www, include it as you have it on your site. After you put in the URL of your website, you're going to put in the username and password that you would like to use. So I have put in the username and I'm going to paste in my password that I have set up. And then I'm gonna scroll down to the FTP settings. Now this is what is used for uploading the images from Lightroom to your website. Okay, so you're, as you can see, I have custom uh, presets already here, but if you do not, you'll be faced with this, which is a, a box to configure your FTP. You will put in the server. This is your FTP server. You will put in your username and then your password. Now note that if you store your password, it will be stored in Lightroom in plain text. Now this is a Lightroom feature. This is not something that we have control over. So uh, note that it will be stored in plain text. However, in order for somebody to gain access to your password for your FTP, the person would need access to your computer and then they will actually need to know that you have an FTP stored uh, on your computer and that it's stored through Lightroom. So they would need to know exactly where to find it and on your computer itself. So it's not something you really need to be too concerned over, but that's something that Lightroom does for whatever reason. Next, you will need to browse, and it's going to bring up a FTP panel. You'll need to browse to find your WP content folder. So you'll see I'm already in it right now, but if I was not, it would show up my root folder like so. And then I would go scroll down to find WP content, which is right there. I would double click into WP content and then hit select, and then I'm done. Make sure that you choose if it's SFTP or FTP and then the port number that your host recommends. When you're done, just hit okay. And then you're gonna go over here and hit fetch from WordPress. What this is going to do is fetch the temporary path that it will need to write the temporary files when uploading uh, to your website. Now, if you scroll down further, you can set the default settings for this publishing service you can do some file renaming. So if you would like to keep your file names as is, you can just bypass this and not do anything. Otherwise, you can rename it to any custom preset that you have made or you can make your own preset. Note that you can actually have multiple publishing services to the same website. So for example, and I will show you this later on, you can actually have a publishing service that renames the files and another one that does not. Moving down, you will have your file settings. Now, if you have Next Gen Gallery set to uh, resize your images, you can just set this to 100 and leave it as JPEG and sRGB. Um, if for whatever reason you need it to be smaller, you can make it smaller. It's uh, really up to you. you can, same thing goes for the image sizing. You can uh, put it down to 72 if you're just using it for web, for web view. But if you plan on selling your images, make sure you have it at 300 DPI without resizing and your quality up to the highest. So that way, when the images are uploaded, they will be backed up at the full resolution, which is what is used for proofing for e-commerce and digital downloads. Next is your sharpen for screen feature. You do, not, you do not need to push this if you do not want to. Again, if you're selling your images, this will affect your original backups as well. And then of course, your metadata, uh, if you want to leave uh, the metadata in or remove it, you can do so there, and then you can add a watermark if you want, or you can just utilize the watermark feature inside of NextGen Gallery. When you're all set, you hit save, and it will create a publishing service for you. There will be an untitled, this is a default thing that Lightroom does, there will be an untitled gallery, you can go ahead and rename that for your first gallery, or you can just delete it and create a new one. 
When you create a new one, you can uh, just hit Create Publish Collection by right-clicking over the Imagely uh, publishing service. In a future video, we will go over how to create collection sets, which are really correlate to Next Gen Gallery's albums feature, and then collections, which correlate to galleries. Here I am in my main catalog, and I want to show you, I have two, um, I have two, uh, really I have three Imagely Lightroom uh, publishing service set up. One is a test that we were doing while developing the plugin, and the other are uh, for my live website. One says portfolio, one says clients. There's one main difference between the two. If I go and show you the settings for the portfolio and I scroll down, you will see that I have renamed, images are renamed to title. And what that does is it takes a title, my meta title, and converts it into the uh, file name for the image itself. So if I have an image title that is um, actually about, you know, a specific venue, I can actually have that title in the file name instead of it just being a DSC12345, which is a standard uh, camera file name. This is great for SEO by having an actual keyword in the title. Uh, and as you see, I also have it as 300 DPI without any resizing, all the metadata in it. And then I do have JPEG mini compression uh, to uh, that adds it to it just so it's a, a little bit more optimized than what it would be as a standard JPEG output. Now, if I go to the settings for the client's one, you will see that there's a little bit of a difference. The file name stays as to what it was. My uh, quality is down to 60. I resize at the largest 2048 with 72 DPI. And then on top of that, I'm going to add JPEG mini compression. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because clients is going to be for proofing and the portfolio is going to be for anything else. And I'm going to eventually, once Print Lab integration is done for Imagely, going to have another one called um, printing. Now I might actually rename this to proofing and then have another one called, you know, sale or something like that. But in renaming it is very easy. You can just hit edit settings and just rename it as is. But doing so, I can have multiple uh, controls over different galleries and albums that I create based on what I need it for. And instead of having only my, my only my file names, you know, renamed or only my file names not renamed or uh, the compression versus not compressed versus size versus, not, you know, not resized and things like that. So you can have multiple and to do multiple, you right click and hit create another published service via Imagely. And it will bring up that same dialogue that you originally uh, were, were uh, presented when you first created your first publishing service for Imagely.